Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit. It's our first time to PagerDuty Summit on Pier 27. Our first time to this cool venue. It's right on the water between the uh, Bay Bridge and Pier 39. Beautiful view outside. Unfortunately, the fire smoke's a little, a little over the top, but we're excited to have one of our favorite guests, Jennifer Tejada. She's the CEO at PagerDuty. Jennifer, great to see you. Thank you, it's so great to be back, Jeff. Absolutely, so this is what, your second PagerDuty Summit? This is our Summit? second PagerDuty Summit. Like 500 some odd people. I think we've had 700 through the door already. Oh wow. Uh, we've got a few hundred streaming online and uh, almost twice what we did last year, so we're really excited. We're still in the infancy stages right. of sponsoring an industry event and we've been really focused on trying to make it a little different to ensure that people walk away with actionable insights and right. best practices and learnings they can take immediately back to their teams and to their companies. So we've had just some awesome guest speakers and panelists here today and it's been a lot of fun. The PagerDuty band played live That's right, at lunch. I saw that at lunchtime. Yeah, which was great. What so are they we're called? A good the the on calls. The on calls. <laughs> I let them name themselves. <laughs> And so you've been here a year now. I have. So how are you, things moving? How are you kind of moving the company along since you got here? What are some of the strategic things that, that you've been able to execute and now you're looking forward? So it's just been an incredible year, honestly. I, you know, you always hope for, for a number of things when you come into a new role. You hope that the team rallies around the business. You hope that the opportunity is as significant as you thought it would. Right. You hope that there aren't more bad surprises than you think there are going to be. And, PagerDuty has been so unique in that there have been more good surprises than bad surprises. There's so much potential to unlock in the business, but probably the thing that's most amazing about it is the people, the community, and the culture around PagerDuty, and just the, the sense of alliance towards making the engineering world work better to ensure that customer experience and employee experience is better. There's just a real sense of duty there, and um, there's a sense that the community is there with you trying to make it happen as opposed right. to working against you. So a lot of our innovation this year, and I mean we've released tons of new technology product including machine learning and analytics and going from reactive and responsive to proactive. There's a lot of stuff happening. So much of that has come from input from our practitioner community and our customer base. And you just don't always have that kind of vocal engagement, that proactive, constructive engagement right. from your customer base. So that's just been amazing. And the team's awesome. We've expanded into um, the UK and Western Europe uh, over this summer. We opened an office in Sydney recently. We've shifted from being a single product company to a platform company. We've more than doubled in size, 150 people to over 350 people. Um, we're in 130 countries now in terms of where our customer base lives and uh, just, just around 10,000 uh, customers. So really, really amazing progress. And you know, sometimes I feel like we're a little bit of a teenage prodigy, you know? We're, we're, we're growing super fast. Other kids are starting to learn how to play the piano. It's a little awkward, but we're still really good at what we do. And I think the, the thing that kind of keeps us out in front is our commitment and our, all of our efforts being in service to, to making both the lives better of the practitioners in our community and creating quantifiable value for our customers, our, right. our enterprise customers. It's interesting to focus on, on, on the duty, you mentioned the duty, because that kind of came with the old days mm. of when you were the person that had to wear when the you, pager, when right? When you carried the pager. Whether you were a doctor Absolutely. on call or you were the IT person. Absolutely. So it's, it's an interesting uh, metaphor, yeah. even though probably most of the kids here have never seen a pager. No, I remember <laughs> as a kid, my dad was in healthcare <laughs> and he had a pager and you knew that when the pager went off, like it was time, you were on duty, you were out, and there's an honor right. in duty and it is a service uh, to the organization. Adrian Cockcroft was here this morning, VP of architecture from AWS and you know, known for cloud architecture that he built out at Net Netflix. And he said something really interesting, which is he believes all people should be on call because you need the pain to go where it's most useful, right? And if everybody's on call, it also creates this kind of self-fulfilling cycle that like, if, you're, if you know you're going to be on call, you build better code. Right, right. Right. If you know that you're going to be on call on the weekend, you don't ship something stupid on Friday night. If you know you're going to be on call and you're a non-technical person, you align yourselves with people who are technical that can help you when that happens. So there's something sort of magical that happens when you do have that culture of being available on the spot when things don't go as planned. Right, right. And now you've got a whole new rash of technology that you can apply to this in, in the area of, of 
artificial intelligence and machine learning. I wonder if you could share right. a little bit kind of where is that now taking you for the next step? Yeah, I think I think the, the biggest opportunity with machine learning for us is that over the last eight years, we've been collecting a tremendous amount of data. And AI and machine learning are only as good as the data they sit on top right, of. And right. so we have three really interesting data sets. We have the events and the signals that come from all of the machine instrumentation, the applications, the monitoring environment, the ticketing platforms that we integrate directly to. We have information around the workflow, like what works best for most of our customers, what doesn't work. So what's the best uh, agile-centric DevOps um, uh, related workflow that enables m ultimate response and ultimate availability and resilience for customers. And then finally, like, what's going on with the people? Who are the people that work the hardest for you? Who are the people that uh, have the subject matter expertise to be the most useful when things aren't working the way they should? You bring all of that together and you build a model that starts to learn, which immediately means you can automate a lot of manual process. You can improve the quality of decisions because you're making those decisions in context. And an example would be, if an incident pops up, we see it in the form of a signal or a set of events. Right. And our machine learning will recognize that we've actually seen those events before. And the last time this happened, here's what the outcome was. Here's what went well, not so well. Here's how you fixed it. And here's the person who was on top of it. Here's the expert you need to call. So I've immediately shortened the distance between signal and action, right, right? right? And I've gotten the people now that are going to come in to that process to respond to either a problem or an opportunity right. are already much more prepared to be successful quickly, uh, efficiently, and effectively. Right, so you shortened right? it and you've increased the probability of success exactly. dramatically. Exactly, and maybe you don't even need a person, and right. that person can go off and do other more important right. proactive work. But you, but you're all about people, and, and you know we <laughs> first true. we first met um, when you were at keynote, and, and we brought you out for a women in tech interview, and so you had a, a thing on Tuesday night that I want for you to share with. Yeah. With what did you do Tuesday night? I am uh, like was just super moved and inspired and excited. I, I've had I've had the opportunity to attend lots of diversity events, lots of inclusion events, a lot of support groups. I'm asked to speak a lot on behalf of. Um, women and underrepresented minorities, and, and I appreciate that, and I see that as my own civic duty to kind of help lead the way and set an example and um, reach back for other people and right. help develop uh, younger women and minorities coming up, but I found that a lot of these events, it's, it's a bunch of women sitting in a room uh, talking about all the challenges that we're facing, and you know, I don't, I don't need to spend more time identifying the problem. I understand <laughs> the problem. What I really wanted to do was bring together a group of experts who have, have seen success, who have a demonstrable track record for overcoming some of these barriers and challenges, and have taken that success and applied it into their own organizations and sort of you know, beating the averages in terms of building inclusive, diverse, teams and companies. So Tuesday was all about one, creating a fun environment. We had cocktails, we had entertainment, it was in a great venue at Dirty Habit, um, where we could have a proactive, constructive, action-oriented conversation about things that are working. Things that you can hear from a female leader who's a public company executive and take that directly back to your teams. Right. Expert career advice, how some of these women have achieved what they have. And we just had a phenomenal lineup. Yvonne Wassener, who's the CEO of Airware, an Cube Andreessen alumni. Horowitz yeah, company, yeah. Cube alumni, yeah, previously yeah. CIO at New Relic. Um, we had Merlene St. Hill, who's the head of operations for all of product and technology for Intuit. Sheila Dorden, the CIO of Symantec. Right. Um, we had Alvina and Tour, who's the CIO at Zora, and I'm missing one. Uh, oh, uh, Rathi Murthy, the CTO at The Gap. And so just quite an incredible lineup of uh, executives in their own right. The fact that they happen to be a diverse group of women was just all the more interesting. Right. And then we surprised the organization after about 45 minutes of this discussion, sharing key learning, sharing best practices, we brought in the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir Chorus, who are um, just embarking in the next 10 days on a trip called the Lavender Pen Tour, where they're looking to spread love, hope, and social justice, and you know, kind of proof that diversity delivers results in the southern states, uh, where equality, both gender equality, and I think um, challenges for equal opportunity for the LGBTQ community are really significant. Right, and right. Uh, Mikkel Svein, who's the CEO of Zendesk, could introduce me to Chris, the director there, uh, about a week before. And I was so inspired by what they're doing. This is a group of 450 
volunteers who have day jobs, who perform stunning shows, beautiful music together that are gonna go on four buses for 11 days around the Deep South and you know, I think make a big difference. And they're taking the Oakland Interfaith um, Gospel Choir with them. Okay. So just really cool. So they came. Sign. And you know, when's the last time you went to a diversity event and people were singing and right, dancing right. and toasting? It was, just, it was just really different. And everybody walked away learning something new, including the, the number of male executives, champions that I asked to come as my special guest to support people in building sponsorship, to support these women and these underrepresented minorities in, in finding connections that can help them build their own careers. Right. And they learned a lot at the event, you know? It was just, it was incredible. It was, I'm really proud of it and it's the start of something special. Good, well I love it. I mean, you, you, yeah. you bring such good energy, both as your day job and also in this very, very important role that you play and it's great that you've kind of embraced that and, and not only take it seriously, but also have some fun. You got, what's the point if you're not going to have fun? And I sort of, it's like you apply the growth mindset to one of the biggest problems in the industry, and you hack it the same way you would a deeply technical problem or right. a huge business problem. And when we get constructive and focused like that, amazing things happen. So right. I now have people like begging to be on the next panel, and we're trying to find the next venue, and you know, we've got right. to come up with a name for it, but this is the thing. Right. And oh, by the way, there's better business outcomes as well. There's also, I mean, I did a ton of business that night. Half that panel. Right. We're customers. They're continuing to invest and partner with Pager Duty, and you know we're excited about the future. And and some of those women happen to be machine learning experts, for right, instance. Right. So, great opportunity for me to partner and get advice on some of the new innovation that we've undertaken. Well, Jennifer, thanks for inviting us to be here. We love to keep up with you and, and everything that you're doing, both before and, and and in your current journey. And congrats on a great event. My pleasure, absolutely. Thanks All for right. having me. She's Jennifer Tahada. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching the Cube from Pager Duty Summit. Thanks for watching.